Wait, don't go anywhere. If you're looking to skip through this video, then I made it a lot easier for you to do that. So don't just go skip it on your own. Look down in the description. I gave you a table of contents of every component of the engine. So hang on, check that out. This is a multiple part video and this is part two. If you wanna see the other parts of this video, you can check the description or possibly if it shows up the playlist on the right. Let's get dirty. There you go. Now that we have successfully removed the head off of this engine block, we're going to take a look at how oil travels through it. There's really no troubleshooting reason for this. It's more just for our own education, and I really hope you enjoy it, because I know I will. Starting at the cylinder head, now removed, we're going to follow the path of oil, starting from when you fill the engine with oil all the way to what that oil does. Okay. So when you fill your engine with oil, there's a cover over here, there's a little hole, you pour the oil in here. It travels down into these holes. From those holes, the oil then travels in here. You can see the lifters, those are hydraulic lifters, and we will get to those more in depth later. But the oil falls in here, and then you can see in the center, there is a hole, oh, there's my finger, there's a hole right there, and that's, that's why you're pouring oil into the center of the head because then the oil path into the bottom of the engine is right there. It appears, oh yeah, on the other side, but it appears that is the only location. Nope, stand corrected, there's another one. It appears that there's a few ways that the oil can then get into the bottom of the engine. And then something to note, which is interesting, is you have a hole here. And that hole allows for lubrication of your timing chain and sprockets. So that's pretty cool. That's how oil is going to then get to the front of the engine to lubricate that system. Just a reminder, again, oil filter is here and the dipstick would have been there. The oil filter has a hole here and here. <laughs> My educated guess is that one is for oil coming in and one is for oil exiting. With the engine flipped over, we're gonna try and find those holes again. It's difficult to see. Ooh, okay, finger here. You're gonna see it right in here. Kind of see that as I pass over? That is where the oil is gonna enter in. On the top, again, there's another one down here. You can see that one a lot better. Alrighty, so oil comes in from the top of the engine, then fills what would be the oil pan, which would be here. That leaves us with the oil pump, which you would be able to see here. Now I'm gonna grab that oil pump and put it on here so you can get an idea of what that looks like. But we have a hole there, oops which you can see nothing but floor through. Now this hole is not for oil to pass through. What I can't show you, unfortunately, is the distributor, as my finger, comes up through here. It is spun off of this gear here. And then the shaft of the distributor extends up through this hole and that actually turns the oil pump. It's just a way to reuse that shaft uh, and decrease complexity. It was a really good design in my opinion. And so this is the hole in which the oil pump is driven. And then this is the hole in which the oil pump is pushing oil out. I have placed the oil pump onto the engine. So this is what the oil pump looks like. We're gonna crack this open for you just cause it is really cool on the inside. But first let's talk about what it does. So you can see there's a hole here and on that hole is a pickup tube. The tube comes up and around, and that goes into the oil pan. Now, we originally started looking at this from the perspective of the oil being poured into the engine, but that's really not what's going on on your daily 
drive, your daily uh, routine is to start the engine from cold. And when the engine is sitting, all of the oil is sitting in the oil pan, which would be upside down at this point. So oil is sitting in the pan, and then it needs to be sucked into the rest of the internals of the engine, which are upward of that oil pan. And so the oil pump does that. Now there's other reasons why you're going to want to have oil pressure. You're going to want the oil to be pressurized and moving through the engine efficiently because what you'll see as we go along is all of these bearings all along the way they have spots for the oil to enter into that bearing surface and lubricate it and i believe they enter in through the crankshaft itself and you'll see that again later you're going to see some holes in the crankshaft which are going to allow that oil to pass through it but it's not going to be encouraged to pass through without any kind of pressure and that's why this is very important this oil pump uh, appeared to be in good shape because I had good oil pressure before I removed the engine, but in any situation when you're replacing engine, I learned it's good to replace the oil pump as well, and so we did that. In fact, one came with my remanufactured engine, which was nice. So you can see here, this is that shaft. So the uh, end of the distributor kind of looks like a flathead screwdriver, and it goes into that shaft and then rotates it. And you can see there's some, in it, inner workings in there. Removing the cover of the oil pump reveals two little gear-like pieces. And you can see that between these gears, there is a little tiny space uh, for oil to ride. And so as these move, they're going to pull oil from one location and shove it into another one not allowing it to go backwards. You can see it's sealed on either side and there's a pocket for the oil to ride. We can then remove these little gears, which are not too dissimilar from a supercharger. Actually, supercharger internals or a Whipple style supercharger is very similar concept here. So we can remove this. We can remove this one. Again, there's the driver from your distributor. You can see that the oil comes in from one side and then exits through another side. We have a fun looking little pin dealio right there. And I'm not entirely sure what that's there for. I wonder if it's just supposed to get rid of any bubbles or something like that as the oil is going to pass over it. I, I don't really know, but, and this can be a little confusing. You can see that the oil will enter here, and I, I'm not going to show you on the camera, but it is quickly rerouted going that way. There's another hole that's been drilled going that way. And then, of course, the hole is drilled here, and so they intersect along the oil to come up. If you imagine this more um, from a manufacturing standpoint, how you would make this with like a CNC type machine, you'd have to drill through holes, or you'd have to drill holes from different angles to get them to connect. And that's all that's really happening here. They're not trying to confuse you or do anything special. Oil comes in, an intersecting hole meets. That hole has been capped off on this side. You've got this weird pin looking device that had to be inserted somewhere and it's inserted here. This has another pin of sorts that's holding it in. I believe that's there because this is the pressurized side. So the pressure could force it outward. And that's just some insurance. But that is the oil pump. It's really quite a simple device, but it's an incredibly crucial one. So oil goes in, oil gets pressurized and gets shoved out here. That goes into this hole here, which it can be kind of hard to see where the end is. But what I've done is I have applied a light and I applied that light here. So what's happening is the oil goes in, it gets pumped, it goes down this hole, and then comes out here. This is where it then enters the oil filter, filters the oil, and then it goes in there to an area that is incredibly difficult to see from here. But it goes into an area just below here. You can see it. It's going in, and then that area is a channel which fills the lifters and we'll get into the lifters in more detail later and I'll even give you a link to a video to watch on the hydraulic lifters but the oil is going to go into this channel 
below this camshaft. That is going to keep those lifters full of oil. And then that channel at some point, and I believe it's right here, you can kind of see a path right here. That is then going to pass oil into the crankshaft. The oil is going to go inside of this bearing and there's holes all throughout the crankshaft, as I said, and it should fill the crankshaft with oil, which then will distribute to each of the bearings. Now, it's, if it comes up here, comes across, at this bearing point, you can see another oil path right here, which goes and lubricates the bearings for the camshaft. And so those are all connected at some point, and I haven't found it yet. At some point, then the oil comes out and fills the pan yet again. Additionally, some of that oil that is in the lifters, which is, you can kind of see one right there, some of that oil is going to go through the push rods. As you see, push rods, which have holes in them. The oil will travel through the push rods. They come up through the holes in the rockers. And then that should then lubricate the moving parts of the rockers, at which point it would fall back down into the oil pan. Just for continuity's sake. So this is the new remanufactured engine and you can see in here, you notice that it's not all covered in carbon on the inside. And then, like I said, this rocker is covered in oil. You can see the oil is down there in those grooves. And it comes up through that little hole that connects to the push rod. And so that's what it is supposed to look like. But it doesn't. Here comes another opportunity for you to show your expertise in the comment section. Because although I've found oil paths for quite a, for lubricating quite a few of the components, I am stumped on a few. Now, getting the oil back into the oil pan, for one, is one that a category that I'm stumped on. Now, I do see here, these are small holes that would allow oil to come out from around these two pieces that house that bearing. Also, Aside from that, I do not see how oil gets to the pistons themselves. Some engines will have like a little spritzer of sorts that will spray oil directly onto the piston, and I'm not seeing it on this one. I also felt the uh, top side of these features here to see if there was a hole, and there was not. So how oil gets onto the pistons is another mystery that you can help me solve. Hey guys, and thank you for watching part two of this engine teardown video. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button and leave a comment down below. Also go ahead and hit that subscribe button because there's a heck of a lot more like this coming your way. And if you wanna watch part one or the other parts of this video, you can do so in the description. Or if you go to my channel page, you can see the playlist and watch all of them there.